Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here, I hope you're doing well, and if you're not, I hope you are soon. Okay, today on the Dungeon Dive, we are going to be taking a quick look at Forbidden Psalm. Forbidden Psalm is a miniature gaming at the end of the world. This is the miniature, uh, basically kind of a supplement, an expansion, a standalone miniatures game that is uh, based on Morkborg, and it is 100% compatible with Morkborg. And we'll talk a little bit more about that really cool thing in a bit. So Forbidden Psalm is a game that I am getting into. I am slowly starting to get into more of these small, simple kind of narrative skirmish games and solo games. And on this channel in 2023, what I want to show people is that it is entirely possible to play these kinds of games without needing a whole bunch of stuff. You don't need minis, you don't need terrain, you don't need any of that. Um, as a matter of fact, I think more people should be showing these games in this way because there's this misconception that the two very, very different, completely separate hobbies of modeling and gaming are are just are conjoined and will never be uh, separated. And I do not like that. A lot of people, they see these skirmish games and they think they're expensive to get into. They, they think you need a whole bunch of terrain and paints and glue and all kinds of different things, but you really don't. You hardly need anything to play these games. So Forbidden Psalm is a pretty simple game. The rules can be summarized on a single page. I do enjoy that. Very similar to Morkborg, very simple. The rules don't get in the way of your fun, of your imagination, and in experiencing the adventure on the table. So in Forbidden Psalm, you are going to be taking a warband of five adventurers, and you are going to be going on quests, playing through scenarios, trying to accomplish certain goals, trying to keep your warband alive long enough to gain some gold and some experience points so they can uh, get better. My warband is going to be called Savannah and the Ragged Tigers, and my main hero here is Savannah. She's kind of a plague doctor type character. These are Pathfinder pawns, and these are what I am going to be using. My other war band members I haven't named yet, but this is going to be my ranged character, my archer. Uh, this creature here is going to be my spell caster. And then we have this guy with his giant two-handed F-off weapon and some kind of a uh, crazy druid or uh, character here. They're kind of a group of, uh, of wildlings or something like that. But each of the members of your warband is basically a Morkborg character. And you will have a name. You have uh, the four basic stats, agility, presence, strength, and toughness. You will have a weapon or two that do damage. You will have a certain number of equipment, a certain number of equipment slots. You will have flaws and injuries and feats. And the book gets straight out of the gate. It starts with a very basic overview of the rules here of measuring dice rolls and your modifiers. It is a basic uh, D20 system where you are trying to hit a target number. Usually usually that target number or the, the difficulty rating is 12. You will roll a D20, you will add or subtract any modifier and you want to uh, meet or beat that target number, that difficulty rating. And then it gets right into character creation, the creating your warband. We have a list of names and titles, D100 names, D100 titles. So you're going to select five models, assign each model a name, allocate your stats, roll a flaw, roll a feat, spend 50 gold, and then select a spellcaster and roll for your scrolls or your spells. So my name, my main character, her name is Savannah. And let's see what her uh, title is here. We will roll a D100. So Savannah's title is 58. And we are looking at Savannah the Nam Tabandi. Nam, Nam Tabandi. I have no idea what Nam Tabandi is. Hopefully that's not something I shouldn't be saying. Savannah the Nam Tabandi. All right. So the stats come in two different groupings. 
you have four attributes, agility, presence, strength, or toughness. And then you can assign this group of numbers to those or this group. You can survive, uh, assign a plus three, plus one, zero, and a minus three. So that would be, you would want to uh, make a character who's really good at one thing, but really bad at something. Or you can make a little more middling character by assigning a plus two, plus two, minus one, and minus two. So let's see, for Savannah, I think I'm going to have Savannah be a little bit more rounded. So I'm going to do the plus two, plus two, minus one, minus two. And she doesn't look like a very strong character. So I'm going to put her minus one. Well, but she is going to be a melee character. So I'm going to give her a plus two to her strength. I'm going to give her a plus two to her presence. I would give her a minus two to her agility and a minus one to her toughness. Okay, so that's her character so far. Your toughness is your, um, determines your, exp your uh, HP, your hit points, your health points. So it is a uh, eight plus your toughness. So she starts with a seven. Okay, here, now we need to roll her flaw. What is her major flaw? What's her tragedy here? That is a d20 roll, 17. All right, she is scared of monsters. That is just great in the world of Morkborg, in the world of Forbidden Psalm. So she is at a minus one to attack all monsters and beasts. That is hilarious. Scared of monsters. Minus one to attack monsters. And all right. Let's see what her feat is. Let's see something she is good at. Five, mind over matter. Model can make a presence test to ignore D4 damage each time they are hit. That's pretty nice. All right, mind over matter. And then we have our equipment and weapons. So I will outfit my warband off camera. You don't need to see me go on my shopping spree. But you have all kinds of different things, like different kinds of weapons, different kinds of armor. You have one-handed weapons, two-handed weapons, melee and range and all kinds of things. And just various things that you might need to buy in order to go on a successful quest in a monster-infested, doom-infested world of Morkborg. You can get bandages, lanterns, torches. It's a really good idea to have some light sources because one of the environmental conditions in the game is complete darkness. And... If you don't have, have a light source, you are uh, completely screwed there. And then we have our scrolls. We have our spells. You have a D10 roll on clean scrolls and a D10 roll on unclean scrolls. And then we get into our normal rules for playing the game, uh, setting up each round. You're going to roll initiative and then you will take you will activate all of your models, your, 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 your characters. Your characters can do a movement action and then they can take an additional action. And that second action can be an additional movement, or you can do a ranged attack, a melee attack, or you can use uh, equipment or a feat or a scroll or interact with the board in some kind of either, either picking up treasure or maybe pulling a switch, some kind of scenario specific goal. Again, we have our tests. They're all, all tests unless specified otherwise are a difficulty rating of 12. We have our movement rules. Movement is five plus their agility. So Savannah will be pretty slow moving at a three. And uh, you can either measure, I play on gridded maps. So I usually will just count squares. As long as you are consistent in how you are counting, as, lo as long as you are consistent between all the various models, it comes out to about the same thing. I find it just a little easier for squares because I'm coming from a more of a board gamers background, but you can also measure. Measure is the default. Combat, close combat, melee combat is very deadly in this game. Every time you take an attack against an, an enemy, they have a chance to counterattack. You can offset that by outnumbering the, your opponents, but your opponents can also do that to you. But when you do a counterattack, the all counterattacks are at a negative three to the roll, so it's harder to hit on a counterattack, but there is that possibility. There is that chance of always taking damage in this game. Then you also have your ranged attacks, Range attacks are very simple. They all range attacks are at a range of 12 inches or 12 squares. And if you are shooting through cover, then you are at a minus three penalty. 
Damage is simple. You will roll your, your your weapon's damage, maybe a d6, and subtract your opponent's armor. The difference is the number of uh, hit points that they take. There's also a morale rule. And also, when your characters are downed at the end of the scenario, your warband members will have to make a death saving throw. If they pass that, they continue to live, but they take a persistent injury. Finally, we get into our spell casting rules. Uh, like Morkborg, spell casting is super, super dangerous, and you do have this calamity table that you have to roll on in case you cast your spells very, very poorly. We also have our omens like in Morkborg, and the omens here are ways to mitigate luck. At the beginning of each scenario, each warband is going to gain uh, six omens, and they can use those for dealing things such as maximum damage. You can reroll dice. You can uh, remove a downed model from plays, and it auto passes its death save. You can cancel a critical or a fumble. Uh, you can reroll on the treasure table, or you can automatically pass one test. And then we have our monster rules. Monsters are very simple in this game, just like they are in Morkborg. Most monsters are going to uh, move 2d6 towards their target. They're going to reach their target and then they will make an attack. And we do have a very uh, pretty comprehensive bestiary here. We have skeletons, feasting wendigos, morka morka, animal cultists, disemboweled ghouls, a great maw, a corpse collector, a siren, an afunk a sock-stealing goblin, a blood-rage vampire, and then we have a uh, table of random encounters that you can roll on for groups of monsters there. And then we get up into our rules on setting up the table on our scenario, our campaign background. This is a 10-mission campaign in here where you are working for this wizard named Verprix, and he is hiring you to go out and find the Forbidden Psalm. And the Forbidden Psalm is a fabled relic, a fabled thing that can actually stop the end of the world. And if you remember Morkborg, the world is ending. It's just a matter of time. It's a matter of when. But this wizard, he says that he has discovered a way to, to prevent the end of the world. And so you are working for him in order to try to do that. You have a treasure table here, a D20 treasure table that you will roll on when you find treasures during your scenarios. Now, all of the scenarios have some role-playing elements to them. So if you wanted to GM this, if you wanted to introduce these kinds of rules, these kinds of skirmish rules into your GM-led games of Morkborg, you have hooks and things that you can use in order to, to further create the narrative and the story. You also have a D8 uh, role on a weather and conditions that you can apply to a scenario. This is an optional rule, but it probably makes things more narrative and more fun. Things like rain, fog, fungi, lightning, night, dusk, bleak sun, and, and uh, physic hauntings. And then we get into our scenarios. The scenarios will have a story. They will have a goal, a reward, how you set up and the different treasure options, how you deploy your uh, the units, the threats, the different monsters you're going to be facing. And then every single scenario has rules for solo play and for co-op play. So uh, Forbidden Psalms is 100% co-op and uh, solo as well. All of your rules there. And then at the end of your scenario descriptions, you will have your campaign rules. So uh, after each warband with at least one standing member gets paid 10 gold, then you will do your death saving throws. You will roll for any injuries. You will gain XP and you can spend XP. You can, as soon as you gain five XP, you can spend it for increasing an ability by one. You can remove a permanent injury, you can reroll a flaw, you can gain a new feat, or you can bring a single warband member back from the dead, but they return with a new flaw. We also have a little chart on relics. These are kind of magical items that you can find. We have a merchant, a rule for a little merchant NPC, some very simple rules for creating your own scenarios, a bonus scenario that exists outside of that campaign. Then we have our war band chart here and some uh, photos of some custom models, some paper minis that you can photocopy and use, and just a little bit of information there. And then here is a random chart for, for creating kind of a grotesque character if you wanted to, to uh, come up with something, uh, kit bash some elements together to make a unique model. So that's the core rule book. I also have some expansions. 
So we have In the Footsteps of the Mad Wizard. This is a campaign expansion that adds a whole bunch of different scenarios as well as adding new elements that you can incorporate into any game of Morkborg. There are new rules for pets, for armor, for weapons, new flaws and feats, new scrolls, uh, new mercenaries, a whole bestiary here that combines some of the monsters from the original game from Forbidden Psalm and new monsters here. We have a whole bunch of new diff uh, different names and titles. You can become undead. Different ways to protect yourself, different kinds of armor, different kinds of weapons there, new states and properties. So things can be cruel, you can have reach, you can throw, there's bleeding, dazed, blinded, diseased, poisoned, ranged, two-handed, and exploding. All kinds of new items, new flaws and feats, new scrolls, new mercenaries that you can hire. An NPC that roams the battlefields called Glom the Collector. And then here we have our large bestiary here with things such as bone horrors, fecal ghouls, uh, the mutant chicken of Kalaroth, the laughing man, the ghoul stain organ, the silent Nagel, the servant of the shadow king. So this is a huge bestiary, very cool. And here we have our campaign. And this campaign introduces the idea of the hog's head in. So the Hog's Head Inn becomes kind of like your place of refuge. It becomes your warband's uh, base. And you can upgrade your room with different beds, better grub, a ritual circle, and various things that you can spend your gold on in order to make your, your base a little more comfortable and a little more comforting. Here we have uh, different conditions. And then we have our campaign here. And the campaign in this book is... Was it 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17 scenarios. The scenarios in this game are pretty short. A lot of them are only six rounds. So they're kind of get in and get out quickly. You're not going to be sitting down for a, a three hour single session of Forbidden Psalm. We have some new injuries, some new relics there, new treasures and a place where you can keep track of your hogshead room and your pet that you can hire for your warband. And we have this other campaign here. So this is a PDF that I printed. This is a large PDF. This was, a, I think, an 88-page PDF, which came out to 22 sheets, four pages a sheet. So this is about the most I would ever put into a single book. But I was pretty happy with the way this turned out. But again, like this other expansion, like in the footsteps of the Mad Wizard, this is going to add all kinds of new things that you can add to your games. Again, new flaws, new mercenaries that you can hire, a whole new campaign that focuses on a necromancer and the undead, all kinds of new treasure. Uh, one of the cool things that this adds is a, you have to feed your warband in between scenarios. And then there is also a D88 chart of random events that will happen in between scenarios. So this almost starts to turn the game into a Warhammer Quest style game where things go on between the scenarios. We'll talk a little bit about that when I get to my five things I like about this game. But again, very simple campaign setting and just all kinds of new things that you get to add to your games. And then we have a handful here, three small expansions. We have the Rotten Bits. And one of the cool things that this adds are these guys called the Rotten Ones. And at, when you start down, when you when you sit down to play a scenario, you can exchange one of the members of your warband for one of these Rotten Ones. And they are kind of unique, interesting, and different types of characters. For instance, you have this Wretched Royalty. The Wretched Royalty has a zero for all of his attributes, agility, presence, strength, and toughness. He's only armed with a broken sword. He has medium armor. He is painfully average. He has no feet or flaw. However, drawing on its heritage, you can command as an action one friendly model within six inches to take a free activation. So if you have a particularly powerful member of your warband, you could take a Wretched Royalty along with you and you could command that member to take an additional action. And then we also have a bunch of different monsters. One of the most interesting mon monsters that can come out using this expansion is Skelly Joe. 
And Skelly Joe is a super powerful monster, kind of like a skeleton god. He can't be killed. He can't be harmed. Nothing bad can happen to him. He comes out onto the battlefield, kills three models, and then leaves. Again, some of that little Morkborg humor there. And then I think there are three little scenarios here, three or four. And this also introduces the idea of doors. So you can add a door and then it has a random D8 things that can happen when you open doors on your battlefields. If you roll an eight, Skelly Joe walks out of the door to say hello. So Skelly Joe can come busting through a door and just absolutely demolish the battlefield. And then we have Dungeons of Death. Dungeons of Death is a small supplement that is focused on dungeons. This includes a small campaign as well as uh, ways to randomly generate dungeons for games of Forbidden Psalms. Uh, this is not my favorite expansion. I wish it was a little more robust. The Endless Dungeon mode is pretty weak in my opinion. I think it needs more random things to roll on, more robust charts to roll on, more variety. So I am hoping that the dungeon mode for this game gets um, expanded more. And then finally, we have this really interesting expansion. If you guys remember last year, I reviewed a game called Fearsome Wilderness. And it was a game about weird kind of cryptids in a, an Americana setting. You were playing characters like uh, Johnny Appleseed or Paul Bunyan, and you were trying to survive in this wilderness and uh, uh, battling against these cryptids, these, these creatures, these creatures of folklore. And the uh, Forbidden Psalms guys and the Fearsome Wilderness guys have combined forces to create Forbidden Wilderness. And this is a bestiary that includes a lot of the cryptids from Fearsome Wilderness. And it includes a lot of the art from Fearsome Wilderness, which was something I did enjoy in that game. I enjoyed the lore and the art and the theme of that game. I just didn't really like the game. But I'm really happy to see these kinds of creatures now in Forbidden Wilderness and also in Morkborg. And then this has one kind of big scenario that you can play over and over again, which is basically a monster hunting scenario where you are going to be rolling up on a chart where you're going to be having to hunt these cryptids. And each of the missions will have you hunting two cryptids and you can roll up on your cryptid table in order to figure out which monsters you are going to hunt and gaining rewards from each one of them. So uh, pretty cool there. So five things that I like about Forbidden Psalm. One is it is dead simple. Just like Morkborg, the rules can be summarized on a single page and you can add as many little supplemental rules as you want to make the game as complex as you want. But the game is dead simple. The rules never get in the way of the fun. They don't get in the way of my imagination. And I almost never have to stop and think about the rules in this game. I really do like that. Uh, number two, it is 100% compatible with Morkborg. So every book you buy for Forbidden Psalm is also an expansion for Morkborg. It has new items, new enemies, new spells, new scrolls, feats, and flaws. Conversely, every expansion you buy for Morkborg is also an expansion for Forbidden Psalm because you can use all the stuff from that in Forbidden Psalm. You can combine the two games. You could combine elements from Solitary Defilement and Ferratory to create travel rules where your band, your war band, is traveling from one scenario to, a ne to the next. You could combine those elements from these two books with that random chart with those random encounters from the uh, Regis side to have a very expansive kind of in-between scenario gameplay. Uh, you could take all of the role-playing rules from all of the various supplements for Morkborg and use those in Forbidden Psalm. You could just use Forbidden Psalm for your combat encounters. So the games are entirely compatible. And so every time you buy something for one, you are also buying that thing for the other. The other thing that I really love about this game is that it takes place on a two-by-two -two table. And it is a small skirmish game, so I can play this on my small table. I am using Loke battle mats for my, my battlefield. I have two stacked up together. And, um, you know, the Loke battle mats, they have all kinds of different uh, environments that you can use. 
You don't need walls, you don't need terrain. You can just look at this 2D terrain and assign different elements to it. You could say, okay, you know, are these full length, uh, full size walls or pony walls? Uh, so th this is a room here. So this room, this prevents a uh, line of sight. Maybe these things down here are just fences. And so you can shoot through those. All you have to do is be consistent and you can assign different elements, different uh, elevations to different types of terrain on your battle mat. You don't need 3D terrain to enjoy a game, a skirmish game. The other thing I like is that it is mini agnostic and because of the weird setting of Morkborg, just about any mini you have, any standee you have, can be used for your games. So I am using, of course, the Pathfinder Pawns and I have a whole bunch of those. And like all kinds of these can be really useful in games of Morkborg and Forbidden Psalm. I mean, that looks like some weird creature from Morkborg or, uh, hey, maybe this guy with the long neck is my the leader of my war band. Um, I've got a bunch of these Pathfinder Pawns that I am using. I put these together for games of, um, five leagues from the Borderlands, but that game is really complex and I just haven't had the, the uh, mental capacity to learn that game yet. But I'll be using these for Forbidden Psalm. If you have games like uh, Zombie Side or Massive Darkness, you can use those minis. If you have uh, Hero Quest, old or new, if you have Warhammer Quest, all kinds of games you can use minis for. You don't need to go out and buy a whole bunch of new minis. You don't need to get into the kit bashing aspect of making your own models. You don't need to get into sculpting. You can really use anything. Uh, you could use meeples. You know, you could assign each one of your warbands and uh, your members a number. You could take a meeple and you could, with a Sharpie, write the number on that Sharpie and boom, you're ready to play. So you don't need a lot of stuff to get into these kinds of small, simple games. And that leads me to point number five, is that it is inexpensive to get into. Um, like I said, you don't need a lot. You don't need a huge money investment. These can be purchased as PDFs for pretty cheap. You could print them out. You could throw them in a three ring binder. If you wanted to get fancy, you could print them out and make little uh, chat books out of them. You could just uh, view the rules on your phone. You could view the rules on a on, on a, a PDF on a on a tablet. Uh, you don't even need the battle mats. You don't even need the look battle mats. You could just play on a table and put some styrofoam cups. Uh, if the next time you order something, keep your styrofoam packaging. A lot of that can be cut up into really interesting little pieces of terrain. Uh, you can use small boxes for terrain. Uh, yeah. You don't need a, it, getting into a game like this does not require a lot of money. You're not looking at something like Warhammer. You're not looking at, um, you know, something that, that needs extensive models or terrain. And that is one thing that I really, really do enjoy. I did want to show one more expansion that I forgot to talk about. And again, expanding Forbidden Psalm with this also greatly enhances Morkborg. And that is these, these uh, bestiary deck that I got from Exalted Funeral. So this is a bestiary deck that has all kinds of creatures from Forbidden Psalm and from Morkborg in it. We have skeletons, corpse collectors, disemboweled ghouls, animal cultists, a feasting puka, a morkaborka, a great maw, the siren, the afonk, sock stealing goblins, blood rage vampire, bone horrors, fecal ghouls, the Adoran Ikhorf, the Mutant Chicken of Kalaroth, the Laughing Man, the Blind Spider Queen, the Rat King, the Tapeworm Terror, the Silent, the Noggle, the Citizens of Domblight, the Exalted, the Satanic Satan, the Deadly Cornibal, um, the Kath Palug. One thing about Morkborg is sometimes I just cannot read the text, and that is fine. I'll just make up my own words. Uh, we have the Acid Slime Blog, Slime Blob. Uh, the Ice Guard, Fungal Ghouls, the Mud Ghouls, the Trench Maggot, the Gas Bug, the Volkloth, Thing from the Fog, the Pathetic, the Ghost of No Man's Land, the Loyal, the uh, Necrezer, the Angel of Morte, the Zealots of War, the Hounds of Anwen, 
the barbed wire beast, the trench rat, the haunted tank, and the living gas cloud. And these have all of your stats that you will need for Forbidden Psalm and for Morkborg with their special abilities with the art. So you could easily use this as your bestiary for both games. I love that. But yeah, that was a, kind of just a really broad overview of Forbidden Psalm. You will be seeing more games like this on the channel. I definitely will be making more battle reports for Forbidden Psalm as we talk about the uh, Savannah and the Ragged Tigers, my warband. We will also be, you will be seeing more of Savannah and we will be talking a little bit in more detail coming up about uh, character death and PC death and my, my thoughts on on character death and how I like my characters to survive and how I am going to be in my games of Forbidden Psalm, they are going to be flashbacks and they are going to be stories that uh, Savannah is writing in a journal. And so she will have some pretty epic plot armor for games that feature her. And for me, that's really important. But we'll be talking about uh, more about character death in greater detail. Oh yeah, also I have, let's see, uh, this is my, in my first scenario here, this is going to be my corpse collector. And then we have some ghouls here. And also in case I wanted to introduce some uh, skeletons. And so yeah, the Pathfinder pawns are really cool for these kinds of games. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed taking a look at Forbidden Psalm. And uh, let me know if you want to see more of these kinds of games on the channel going forward. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.